Two weeks ago, we covered a market update for big guys like Ronald Acuna, Juan Soto, and Fernando Tatis. Well, today we are going to be covering the second tier players, as I like to call second tier players in the Pete Alonzo's and the Keston Heroes of the world. So sit back and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, everyone, to Dinging Corners, a baseball podcast powered by Slab Stocks. I'm your host, Nate, and today we are doing another off-season update. So two weeks ago, we did an off-season update. It came out on January 7th. Today is January 20th when I'm recording, but you will be listening to this on January 21st if you are one of the first people to listen to it. I don't imagine that everyone listens to it on the first day it's out, but uh, the day it comes out, January 21st. And so we did it about two weeks ago. And uh, last week, the Francisco Lindor trade happened, so that's big news. We covered that. But this week, we are doing another offseason update. So when I last left you, my question was this. Before we get deep into this podcast, I want to talk to you guys about Slab Stocks Breaks, our new breaking service to provide content for you and get you into cards that you normally wouldn't be able to buy yourself because box prices are just absurdly expensive nowadays. And today, Thursday, January 21st, we have a baseball break coming up, and I am whip ripping 2019 Top Series 2, 2020 Top Series 1, and a 2020 Top Chrome Sapphire box for you guys. So please go to YouTube and check that out. If you want to slabstocks.com, you can click on Shop over here, and you get to this page right there. And you will see all of our breaks that we have going up in the future week. And we even have a baseball, another baseball break for next week. And that includes 2020 Bowman and 2020 Bowman Draft Sapphire Edition. So some really, really, really cool products going on here. And I hope you guys can join our YouTube live and watch me rip it and talk baseball with me. uh, And uh, just, you know, come support us if you could. So thank you, everyone, for listening to my little ad, and let's get back to the podcast. Tatis, Acuna, and Soto are up in price, and I am trying to pronounce Acuna's name right. I always say Acuna. That's not correct. Somebody uh, pointed it out to me in the uh, comments last time, and they are correct. I should be saying Acuna with a ya at the end. Um, I try to get better. I try to get better. A little tangent. Sorry. Anyways, so we talked about Tatis. We talked about Acuna. We talked about Soto and how their prices uh, were rising. Um, and the other guys in the league, the Sotos or the uh, Pete Alonzos and the Eloy Jimenez's of the world, they weren't matching the exact same trajectory for price. Acuna and Soto and Tatis had gone up by like 50% at least, maybe not Acuna, but Soto and Tatis had gone up by at least 50, 60, 70%. Uh, Now they've doubled in price for the most part. And yet the other guys that started at $40 were not up to $80. And so I, my question was, is this legit or is somebody just pumping up the big guys and nobody really cares about the little guys? If it's legit, then there was going to be uh, good deals on the little guys, the, uh, Jimenez is of the world, right? The Pete Alonzos, the Keston Heroes. If it wasn't, then we're going to watch those go down and these would never rise up. So we're back again today to take a look at that and see what we can see. So we're looking at the lesser, quote unquote, lesser guys. So we've got Pete Alonzo, we've got Eloy Jimenez, we've got Vlad Guerrero Jr. Series 2 non-numbered short print, Keston Hero, Jordan Alvarez, Luis Robert, and then I grabbed two guys, just two vets, former MVPs in Chris Bryant and Jose Altuve, just to look at their markets too compared to the young guys and see if anything's happening there. Obviously, Chris Bryant's still young, but 29 years old. Um, And Jose Altuve, 32 now, something like that. I don't know how old he is, 31. And so an interesting look into former MVPs and see what's going on there. So like always, I am going to be sharing my screen so you can fact check my work uh, instantly. Uh, like to do that so that instead of me just cherry picking, because you can cherry pick stats, you can cherry pick stats all you want, and you can cherry pick cards where one card goes for outrageously higher than the other cards are going, and you can use that in your video, and then nobody knows, you know, if it's true or not. So I like you to be able to see everything um, right up in front of us. So 
first off, before we get into those guys, and we're going to talk a little bit about Fernando Tatis just uh, because something interesting is happening here. And that is Fernando Tatis first Bowman Chrome uh, PSA 10s. Uh, shout out Rory from Brewtown for uh, texting me this. I don't think I texted him back. Rory, if you're watching, I'm sorry for not texting you back. But we're looking at this, and it's $1,000. $1,018 on January 18th. $1,010 on January 18th on bids. $1,100 on January 15th. If we scroll down the page and we go to November 21st, per se, we're looking at $550. So that $1,100 is double the price of the... Fernando Tatis already 550 to 1,100, um, 550 to 1,000 if you want to round down because that 1,100 is probably a bit high for a buy it now. But that's crazy. That's the market has exploded for this Fernando Tatis card, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if it if this is what Fernando Tatis's first Bowman is doing, what is Wander Franco's first Bowman going to do when he gets up to the majors? You know, right now you're looking at two hundred dollars for a PSA ten. Maybe it's a little bit higher, two twenty five. I haven't looked in uh, uh, since last time we did it. But uh, you know, what are those going to do? So I'm thinking to myself, man, I've got some Bowman Chrome Wander Francos that I pulled from packs. Maybe I should just hold on to those forever. And so that's where I'm at right now when I'm looking at this because PSA 10 is doing a thousand bucks. Uh, that's insane. And then lastly, we're going to look at Fernando Tatis's tops Chrome rookie PSA 10 here. And if you're wondering why I always do PSA 10, it's because it's just the easiest. Most cards are graded PSA nowadays, and it's just the easiest way to get a baseline for everything. It's just PSA 10 top grade. What can you get? Uh, go down from there. And what do you know? But we're looking at $350, $340, $110 shipped for a non-graded Fernando Tatis Topps Chrome rookie card. That is insane. Uh, another $350. And so you're looking at these guys, and just in the last couple of days, these cards have gone up drastically. It never hit $350 in season for Topps Chrome. And I chose Topps Chrome because it's like Bowman Chrome. They're both Chrome cards. And uh, these cards, too, they just keep going up and up and never hit 350 in season. At the height of his spectacular first half of the 60-game season, they did not hit 350. And yet here we are chilling at 350 right now for Topps Chrome. And it's overtaken the top series, too, which is um, you know cool to see because that was one of those things where Chrome is starting to overtake them consistently. And uh, I think that has to do a lot with baseball or basketball and football collectors who really like prism which is a chrome product and like optic which is a chrome product and they are getting into uh baseball and they'll probably looking towards chrome instead of a paper product like tops flagship anyways that's just my little fernando tatis update because i thought the prices here were absurd um really cool to see from for a guy that loves Fernando Tatis and was really high on him last season. Um, but I still can't believe that we're looking at a thousand dollars for a Bowman Chrome first PSA 10. Insane. And 350 for a Topps Chrome, also insane. Now let's get on to what I promised you guys. And that was looking at these lesser guys here. And so you've got Pete Alonzo, Eloy Vlad. Um, if you're wondering how I did it, you know, you look up Pete Alonzo top series two rookie PSA 10, and then you can just minus out. As long as you don't have a space, you can minus out anything you don't want. So I didn't want golds. I didn't want complete set. I didn't want SGC, BGS. I didn't want any lots, nines. Um, I could have minused out, you know, black, foil, anything that pops up. Um, I did not for this one because there was none in my first couple looks. But here we are, January 17th, $60 for a PSA 10. Um, but then January 17th, also $50 for a PSA 10. So what's going on there? $55, $57 for a PSA 10 on January 16th, $55 with shipping. Notice the shipping's really high on January 16th there, but then $60 on January 13th. What's going on here is that nothing's making sense. There is a drastic like $10 difference between $50 to $60 for Pete Alonzo, but you're usually around $55. Um, somebody got a steal here, and that's not even like a ridiculous time of day. That's 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and yet... Uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and yet 50 bucks, you know, when the next one, two hours later, you can see that there 1947, which is 747 sold for $11 more. Insane. 
insane. Uh, so that person got a steal, but then you go back and I talked about it on January 7th. And I said, what is, you know, is there going to be movement of these secondary cards, January 7th to go with the big cards and relatively, I think the answer is no. January 4th, the closest we can get to January 7th, $54 with shipping. January 11th, the closest after January 7th, $55 shipping. So around the same, exactly the same price, basically. And so we're looking at Pete Alonzo and we scroll up and top of the list is $60. They really haven't moved. And even if you go back a ways, if you go back, they had moved from $30, you know, in November up to maybe $60 now. So they've doubled since then, but they, uh, not huge price gains. I, they haven't got back to where they were at in season in season. He was, you know, set or before last season, he was a $70, $75 card and they haven't hit that price yet. Uh, whereas these other big name guys have, um, what to make of that. We'll come back around to it at the end. Eloy Jimenez though, $75, $80, $68, $69 if we round up the last 23 cents, uh, $75, $70. You know, these are all January 17th. If we go back to January 7th, which is when I asked if these prices were going to change, we're looking at $65, $60. Um, and so, yes, Eloy, Pete Alonzo hasn't moved very much. He's moved since December, November, but he hasn't moved much since I asked about on January 7th, whereas Fernando Tatis has kept climbing. Juan Soto's climbed. Um, Pete Alonso has not, even though he's gone up, but he hasn't gone to his former highs, whereas these other guys are busting through their former highs. Well, Eloy Jimenez, not necessarily probably to his former highs. I'm not hundred percent sure what he was at in season. I think he might've hit a hundred dollars. Do not quote me on that. Um, but we're looking at $75 and he, if we go back to November, November 23rd, like we did last time. And he is at, you know, November 26, $50 all day long, right? 45 plus 350, 47 plus four. And so $50 a card and we're up to 75. So he's gone up 25 bucks. Um, he's gone up 50%, which is nice. Uh, Pete Alonso has actually doubled since December. And yet they're still not making it to their former highs like these other big time guys are. Vlad, Guer Vlad Guerrero Jr., on the other hand, You've got $216 for Vlad Guerrero Jr. NNO uh, SP PSA 10. $200 for the same card. $185 January 17th. Um, $275, which is absurdly high. Just a terrible sale. A terrible sale. Um, I do not think this was probably bought. This was probably shilled. No chance that that was paid for. If it was paid for, that person made a horrible purchase. Um, $200, 185 And so you're looking at these cards and Vlad Guerrero NNOs. Uh, they they might have got above 200 but I think for the most part, they were around 180 last year. Settled in around 180 and stayed there for a while. But then in November, if we scroll back towards November, November 18th right here, 112 bucks, 111 bucks. 113 bucks, 115, 16 bucks. And so we're looking at prices there and they have shot up drastically, almost double. I mean, we're talking, we're talking $216 for this one and people were paying $110. That's right off of a hundred percent profit off of this card. So while, you know, the Eloy's and the Pete Alonzo's, well, Pete Alonzo went up double, but Eloy did not, even though I'm more excited about Eloy than I am about Pete Alonzo and Vlagaro Jr., though I will admit Vlagaro Jr. did have a ton of weight loss this summer. I just saw a pic, or this winter, I just saw a picture of him, and he looks fantastic. He has lost a ton, ton of weight. I still don't know if that will make him be able to hit the ball off the ground. He likes to uh, hit a ton of ground balls, like 56% last year, and until he does that, I do not know if I want to bet on him, but being lighter might make him able to uh, leg out some hits on the ground compared to what he was doing before. That being said, there's really no rhyme or reason to what's going on right now. Uh, Vlad is up 100% almost. Eloy is up 33%. Pete Alonso from November is up 100%. Um, if you want to consider it one sale at 60, probably a little bit less than 100%. I mean, this would be up 20 bucks, right? You know, I don't know what to make of it. So we move on.
we move on to Keston Hira, and you're looking tops update PSA 10, 40 bucks, 40 bucks, $60 on bids, $40 on bids January 16th. If we go to January 7th and we get as close as we can get, which is January 8th, $40 still. So the same price from January 7th till now, even though the other guys have gone up, uh, the other guys being like Fernando Tatis has gone up. Keston has not, but since December, since November, um, he has gone up in price. November 29th, $22. November 26th, $26. So he's gone up, maybe not quite by double, uh, but he has gone up in price. And that's nice to see for Keston because I think he's one of those guys, along with the Christian Yelich's of the world, along with the Chris Bryant's, one of those guys that really needs uh, Javi Baez, really needs video to do well to make adjustments during games. And without it, uh, he struggled. I expect a big bounce back. But still, $40 is a far cry from what he was during the season. I know he had a disappointing season, but still a huge far cry from where he was at regular season. Moving on, Jordan Alvarez. He has gone up a little bit, so we're looking at $68 here. Um, accepted offer, suplex insights did not get me an accepted offer on this one. I was really curious because it says $45 accepted offer. Um, but we're looking $62 uh, for bids on January 19th. And we're looking at $60 January 19th on bids, $75. That's a bit high. Um, $65, $60 January 17th. So he's around the $60 to $65 mark. If you go back to... January 7th, and he's still at the $60 mark January 7th. If you go back a couple days before that, obviously, we're at the $50 mark. And then if you go back all the way into November, like we have been doing for everyone else, and you are going to get... That's absurdly high. I was not expecting him to be, you know, $54... Oh, where did it go? $55, $57 on November 29th. $57 on November 29th. If we go back a little bit farther, $45 on November 19th. Uh, another $46 on November 20th there. And so Jordan, while he has gone up, he started at, let's say, $45 in the middle of November, and he's gone up to $60, only $15 high. So the, here is where you find the deals, is the guys that are at $45 and have only gone up to 60. You know, Pete Alonzo was at 30. He went up to 60. I still think there's probably room for him to go up to 75. Eloy's at 75. There's probably a little bit of room left in there to go up to 80, 85 before the start of the season. Um, Jordan Alvarez starting at 45 and only going up to 60. I definitely think there is still quite a bit of room there where you could probably see him get up from 60 to 85, 90. Uh, I could see that happening, especially Astros fans. Uh, they're good baseball fans. Shout out Lou. And they are excited about their team. They just resigned Michael Brantley to a two year deal, $32 million. Jordan will be healthy. He'll be mashing home runs. And, uh, I think there's probably a good buy, a good buy right here, uh, for sure in Jordan at $60, especially cause he has not, he has not gone up like everyone else. Lastly, we've got Lou Bob here, Luis Robert. Um, for our young guys, for our check-in on our young guy market here. And we're looking January 18th, $153. January 18th, $135. That's a good deal, $135 on January 18th. January 17th, $153. And then, um, you know, January 11th, $160. January 12th, $165 on Buy It Nows. If we go back to January 7th, when I asked the question, the closest we can get is January 5th, and that's still $150. January 9th, $145. So the prices from that him till for, for Luis Robert from January 7th till now really haven't budged. But if we go back to November, you're looking at uh, December 7th, $113, right? November 30th, $115. November 30th, again, $116, right? Scroll back a little bit farther, November 29th. $109, you know, 110 So in the middle of November, late November, it was like a $110 card. There was Buy It Now. It's November 18th for 100 bucks. A Buy It Now for $100. It's now a $150 card. Uh, so he's gone up pretty drastically, $50 a card there for Lou Bob. Um, thing about him is that that's still drastically under what his price was going. Now, he's got a little bit of, of 
a problem looking at his cards compared to end season is that his card came out last season and people were sending it off to get graded. And so the first cards coming back to, from grading, you know, very rare. And so you are going to be looking at Lou Bob prices and be like, wow, he's not even close to what he was last season, even though these other big name guys are, and these young rookies are, that's because everyone's PSA orders with Lou Bob's are coming back. And that is just slowly going to drive down the price. And you're going to see that with a bunch of these guys too. You know, Eloy's, I bet there's still people waiting on Eloy's from PSA. And they're at $75 now. And once he hits 40, 45 home runs this year, there's going to be people sending in their Eloy's all over the place. And we are going to get up to $10,000, 10,000 PSA 10 count. And then this Eloy $75 card now might be a $60 card, or it might stay around the same price and go up a little bit because you know, of how well he did 45 home runs type of thing. Um, but if you're looking at Lou Bob to get back to him and you're saying, man, his prices really haven't gone up anywhere close to where he was before, but they have gone up by $50 since the end of the season. Um, that's because there's so many, so many cards getting sent, uh, that people are getting returned to them from PSA finally. So we have that. And now let's go on to our two former MVPs. And so all of these guys, Fernando Tatis, Pete Alonso, Eloy Jimenez, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Keston Hira, Jordan Alvarez, Luis Robert, they have all gone up in price since the middle of November. Middle of November was your buying opportunity to get the lowest price, and they've all gone up. Some guys, Fernando Tatis of the world, have gone up even higher than they were two weeks ago. Most of the other guys have stayed around the same since January 7th, since the last market update. Uh, they have not budged a ton. I expect them to break through a little bit more Come February, middle of February, when spring training starts, I expect, you know, if Eloy's $75 now, I'm not shocked that he would be 80, 85, right? If Pete Alonso was 60 now, I wouldn't be shocked if he's 70. I don't think there's going to be huge gains to be had. I think maybe you could expect maybe $10 a card per guy, but not too much more than that. Maybe if you're a really expensive guy like Luis Robert or 150, you could see a 170, 175. Um, but I'm not expecting much more than that. Now, where it gets interesting is all of these guys have risen in price. You know, the rising tide rose all young guys. Where it gets interesting is these former M young MVPs that are now older and former MVPs. Chris Bryant did not have a good year last year. Jose Altuve did not have a good year last year. And yet what we'll see is that a rising tide does not rise all ships. And so you're looking at Chris Bryant, January 15th. We're looking at his 2015 tops rookie PSA 10 close up. Put it in the close-up into the description, and you'll get this, and you can minus out all of this stuff so that you don't get anything else. And we're looking at $64 January 15th, $71 January 13th, $60 January 12th, buy it now, uh, almost $55. And then, well, that's the last one for what I was looking up uh, in January. Now, we go back. We go back to November, and we're looking at $47 November 26th. Uh, $43 on November 23rd on bids, $40 November 15th. And so you are seeing rising prices, especially this on bids, $70. Now, is that a fair price? Probably not if this one's getting popped for $64 on buy it now two days later. That being said, it has raised in price. Nobody can deny that. It's raised at least, you know, almost 20 bucks uh, for this card, November 2nd, we're looking at $31, November 2nd, $31. And so we've gone up $20 on Chris Bryant, despite the fact that he is a former MVP that had a bad year, only has one year left on his deal for the Cubs, and is probably going to get traded if they get anything for him that's worthwhile. And they might not, so they might hold on to him and then let him walk because they have Javi Baez and Anthony Rizzo to also pay. And they are crying like they have no money. So I don't expect them to resign Chris Bryant. So you're going to see him walk somewhere. Hard to get a much bigger market than the Cubs. Um, you go to LA, okay. You go to the Yankees, okay. But other than that, this is probably the best you can do if you're collecting Chris Bryant is him being on the Cubs. And so if he's sixty dollars right now, you know. Where can he go from there because of the contract situation and that and the Cubs being a bad team? And so pretty good hefty price tag for him considering all those things and considering that, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty with him that the price rose. That's really nice to see. We go on to Jose Altuve, another former MVP, a little bit older. And what do you know? $70 on January 18th, 
70 ish dollars on January 17th. That's way too high. $80 on January 16th, one bid. Uh, that was a mistake by that buyer. $65 on January 13th, $65 on January 13th. Uh, you round up a little bit, $65 on January 10th. And so all those prices are the same. Now, if we go back to November, November 9th, $55. November 11th, $70. Buy it now. November 7th, $71. Um, November 16th, $65. November 19th, $61 free shipping. November 21st, $59 and $12 shipping. So $71. And what you'll notice is that Jose Altuve hasn't budged at all. Former MVP, bounce back candidate, uh, face of a franchise in Houston that always has postseason aspirations, and yet no price movement. So you are going to have these guys, and it's not shocking to me at all when I looked this up. I was actually shocked that Chris Bryant had moved um, I even looked up guys like Joey Gallo, you know, just to go way out there and no price movement. And so what we're seeing in the market right now is that all of these young guys and it and this is not going to become shocking to anybody. If you follow along with the baseball market, you follow along with the basketball market is that all of these young guys in baseball, their prices have doubled or 33 percent or anything like that. They have all gone up. Varying degrees, obviously. But they have all gone up since mid-November. But it is not carrying everyone. And so my thing is this. If you have these young guys, figure out which young guy is the next guy to become Chris Bryant. Right? You know, Alex Bregman, really nice young player, really, really good. Looked like he was going to be the face of the MLB. And then they had the cheating scandal. And now, you know, I don't hear anybody talking about Alex Bregman as the next card guy to buy. Chris Bryant, former MVP, face the MLB, nothing. If you're not if you're not Mike Trout at this point in your career, if you're not Mike Trout by the time you're 27, or if you don't have a Christian Yelich type trade and then blow up from uh, All Star to MVP caliber player, you're not going to see price increases anymore. I don't think. Um, this is just my guess. I could be wrong. Uh, let me know in the comments if you disagree with that. But I think it's all young guys. All young guys all the time. You're looking at it. Fernando Tatis, Pete Alonso. We covered them all, right? Fernando, Pete Alonso, Eloy Jimenez, Vladimir Guerrero, Keston Hira, Jordan Alvarez, Luis Robert. We covered Juan Soto. We covered Ronald Kuna last week. They all have incredible prices. Incredible prices. Um, they've all risen so many dollars. And yet, at some point, one of these guys, two of these guys, three of these guys is going to become the next O. Oh, you know, he was last year and you better be selling and making your money so that you're not sitting on Chris Bryant 2015 tops rookie PSA 10s, right? And so uh, that's just one thing to look out for. If I was a betting man, I would I would say maybe it's going to be Vlad Guerrero. I just don't trust that he is going to figure out his swing. I, I really love him. Don't get me wrong. 105 WRC plus his first year, 115 WRC plus his second year. But if I was a betting man, I would bet on him. He's a really good player, but I don't think he's ever maybe going to get up to those 150, 160, 170, 180 WRC pluses that people are expecting out of the number one prospect. And if he never makes it there, then these cards, he's just going to be that that guy that never made it. Is good, but never made it. Going to be a Chris Bryant, Jose Altuve. You look back in two years and be like, I can't believe I spent $180 on a PSA 10. Um you know, Kesson Hira, college hitter, already kind of old for the, was a 23-year-old rookie. Um, you know, maybe that happens to him, right? 25 already, Jordan, old. And so uh, it just gets to the point where which one of these guys is going to become the next Chris Bryant? I know I'm recycling through my thoughts a lot, and I'm sorry about that. But just be cognizant of it. Be cognizant of where the market has moved and how it's always young guys. And move these guys that are a couple years old. You know, if they came out in 2018, 2019, the Gleyber Torres of the world, if they came out back then, maybe sell and put your money into 2020 guys. And once it hits 22, sell those guys and put them into 2022 guys. And move the cycle along. Don't always try to go for top dollar. But get your money in, get your money out, and don't be caught holding the bag. Anyways, that is my market update for you guys. I hope you all enjoyed this week's Dinging Corners episode. Next week, we should have a special interview 
um, from a guy that I'm very excited about as long as he has time. Uh, it might get switched around. It might not. But we will have an interview for a guy that writes for a pretty famous website and has done prospect stuff in the past. I'm extremely, extremely excited about it. He's got into cards recently. And so I'm excited to talk to him if if we get the podcast or the interview nailed down next week. Be expecting that. I hope you are excited for it. And I will talk to you guys again next time.